We're on, Marianne. Hello, Hello. look who I've got. <laughs> so welcome to a very uh, special edition of Top Tip Tuesday. And the reason I am excited about today's edition is because we have the amazing Marianne Bennett here and she's come on board to talk to you today about using webinars to build your brand. And the reason I am so excited about this is because not long ago, Mary Ann was an unknown. Nobody knew what she did. She didn't know how to tell anybody what she did. And now she's getting offers and opportunities and signing up new clients like you wouldn't believe it. And her secret to success really is a commitment to webinars. Well, there's a whole bunch of other things. But uh, we're going to unpack this topic because there's a lot of people at the moment in LBB who are scared about doing webinars. So Marianne, firstly, for those that don't know you, and this goes out to YouTube as well, by the way, come on into my microphone. <laughs> Tell us who you are, what you do, and why it matters. I'm Marianne Bennett. My business is Adelaide Nutrition and Wellbeing. So I'm a clinical nutritionist, but I help women recover their health um, when they've been stuck on the doctor roundabout and they have no idea what's causing um, them to be sick. Because that's what I did. I basically um, got diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I had no idea how to get well. So I spent 10 years. 10 and, years. And going to uni at 50 to actually help myself. And now I am passionate about helping women do exactly what I did because when you help one woman get her health back, you help the whole family. Mm, absolutely. And what I love about you, Marianne, I remember when we first started working together and you were like, if I can just help one person, one person, um, it'll all be worth it. And, you know, you've dedicated many of, you thought I was going to talk about tantrums, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> She's had a few of those, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but what I love about Marianne is she is a true mission-based business builder and this is the best place to come from because it's never been about the money for Marianne. It's never even been about quitting her job. It's about healing herself and then healing others along the way and just leaning into the space of truly mastering the art of nutrition and health and well-being, which I love. But Marianne, when you first started out in business, what were some of the things that held you back? Um, my own fear, my fear of being visible, my fear of not looking like looking like I'm stupid like people wouldn't know who I was so I would just I just wouldn't talk to people I just didn't want to because I didn't know I just had this fear that people would ridicule me mm. and you used to feel that way about putting on LinkedIn didn't you I felt that I still feel I still have some fears around <laughs> uh, social media and videoing myself so it's always good when someone else is in the picture so I don't have to actually do yep. it myself Drag you in, yeah. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time, you know, yes, I have had lots of tantrums. Mm. I spent a lot of time. But I, I think from the very first time we met Jodie, the beginning of 2019, I knew you were the one that I needed in my life to guide me to where I needed to be, Yeah, which was my ability to help people because yeah. I was stuck. I keep saying I was stuck in my own way until I got out of my own way. I was never, ever going to be able to help other people. Yeah, and you really have got out of your own way. And we all, I get in my own way every now and then. We all do trip over sometimes. But I think what you've achieved this year is phenomenal. So, Marianne, let's just give some people some perspective. And by the way, if you're watching live, please give us a comment. Say hi to Marianne. We can see the comments come up. When you started in your business, what was your experience around public speaking, running webinars, coaching clients, speaking on stage? Um, my only experience in life was being a parent of four kids. Yes. <laughs> and it's, I've been, I've been self-employed, so I've had my own cleaning business, but helping people, mm. doing webinars. When I was at uni, my 12-year-old granddaughter had to teach me how to use PowerPoint because I had no idea when... I started even how to use technology. Yeah. I still have tantrums over technology, I have to say. <laughs> so only a year and a half to two years ago, Marianne had never run a webinar. Is that fair to say? When did you do your first one? Um, April last year. 
April in 2020 was Marianne's very first webinar. So if you are sitting on the fence around doing a webinar, let's break down, Marianne, for those watching. How did we get you to do your first one? Can you even remember what the steps were that you put in place that made you feel like you could possibly survive it? Well, I guess the biggest reason why I had to do webinars was because, like, we were with COVID hit and it was like when you can only do one-in-one -one consultations or you can't do one-in-one -one consultations, well, how do you reach your network? Like, how do you reach people? And it was yeah. like, well, it's it was like, well, here here it is. Here's my opportunity. How I can get – I put myself out there and I could do it. I could yeah. run a webinar and I didn't have a fear. I didn't have fear. That was the one first time I went – well, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can actually remove the fear. Yeah, I did. And I went, oh, my God. And I re re put it on Eventbrite and all of a sudden I had like 60 registrations and I went, <laughs> huh? It what yeah. happened? <laughs> yeah. And we still to this day do not know why Marianne's webinar on Eventbrite was such a phenomenally popular uh, topic because you launched it on there. No one in the Lifestyle Business Builder has had this level of um, responses of just organic traffic, but Mary Ann. And so what we want to do is uh, put the challenge out there to you all. Get your webinar up on Eventbrite, tweak the copy, and then you were just finding that that Eventbrite was having, what, 40, 50, 60 random yeah. people registering. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know who they were, where they were coming from, or how they were finding it. What was the name of your webinar? Eating for your genes. Eating for your genes. So it was a popular topic. Yep. yep. So it's about finding what is it What is it people are looking for. Like, yep. is it something that, I mean, I could have put it about nutrition, but there are so many people talking about just nutrition. Yep. So, yeah, find a topic that actually resonates with people. What is it that, what is it they want to know about? Yeah. And genes is a really new topic, so it's like, Wow. You know, Eating so. for your genes. Mm. It worked. So popular topic. Uh, we had a crack. It worked out well. Eating for your genes. Then tell us, so the first webinar you enjoyed the process? Yes, I did actually. Yeah. <laughs> How many people actually showed up? Do you remember? I had 25 at the first one. I had 60 registrations, but I had 25 people um, registered. Show up. Yes. It's yes. amazing. Yeah. And I, I think I got five new clients out of the first webinar. Yeah. Amazing. So this is... I had someone sign up for the webinar, not turn up and then send me an email and says, I need what you've got. How do I sign up? Like, but she didn't even, She still admits to this day that she never watched the webinar that yeah. she signed up for. But she knew your messaging was what yeah. she was after. What was it in your messaging that she knew she wanted? Well, I guess she was like one of the many people that I deal with is that she had health issues and she was just looking for yep. the answer like she was looking for someone who had been where she'd been and yep. wanted, had had a solution for it she wanted to find out what she thought I had the solution yeah. and as it turns out I did you did yeah and you helped her hmm. and you also used your webinar to launch your first uh case study remember we did yep. the case study thing <laughs> seven steps to six figures um you got your five people which yep. is what you wanted yep. from your first Not webinar ten. You got 10 people registered yep. for the program, but five yep. people, so it was sold out, yep. halfway sold yep. out um, from the first one. Yep. Once you did the first webinar, what did you do next? Just kept repeating what worked, Jodie. Yes. It worked, <laughs> so I just kept repeating it. And how often did you do it? I did it once a fortnight. Back once a fortnight? Months. I always thought once a month, once no, a no, fortnight. No, 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 I was doing it once a fortnight for about the first five months and then I transitioned it to once a month and I'm still doing it once a month. Amazing, amazing. And do you still list it on Eventbrite? Yes. Okay. And are you still getting new clients from it? Yes. Yes, amazing. Along the way, was there anything that tripped you up or any big lessons that you came across? I think you need to um, change up the copy a bit can't have it completely the same all the time I did yep. repeat it and then I got to the point where well I know it's not unique I changed mm. the title a couple of times yep. so that it was basically um, just refining what people were looking for yeah and tell us about the uh, structure of your webinar so as you're going through it 
Um, is there a flow that you found or what well, works? Yeah, well, I guess people want to know about, I always tell people about me and about my story because it's sort of my passion and the reason why I go why I'm doing it in the first place. And it's about, and then, then the next bit it is about is the lessons that I learned. So I'm now yeah. using it using it as a, well, this is what I did, this is how you can do it too. So educating yeah. people that, you know, um, what I did wasn't, it's not rocket science. Yeah. It's actually really, really, it's really simple and really basic. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just offer them an opportunity yeah. to work for yeah. you. And, you know, I always offer some, you know, them, an opportunity to have a free chat with me and then you yep. know, work out whether the, you know um, I'm the perfect fit for them if they, they if I've got what they need and sometimes it takes them one two three times to come back you know I've had people come on and watch the webinar one or two times yeah um, and I've kept in contact with them you know kept, you know sent them regular emails and then you never know like this week someone oh, an email popped in someone I I did a that was on my webinar about six months ago, and now wants to uh, wants to join my um, the rerun of my my oh. online program. So Brilliant. and she's bringing a couple of friends along. Yes, so. that's right. We've just sorted that out. It's amazing on this morning's coaching call. And so this is a really important thing that I want you all to know. It's not as Marianne said, rocket science. You just got to put yourself out there. Do your first webinar. Talk a little bit about you and your story of why you do what you do. Break down the lessons learned. Three is the magic number. So there's three areas to the webinar. There's three things you're going to teach. And then at the end, you just invite people to be a client. It's really that simple. Yes. Rinse and repeat is the secret to Mary Ann's success. She did it once a fortnight. I've been telling everyone once a month, but that's awesome that you even did it once a fortnight, even better. Um, tell us about some of the opportunities that have come up for you, Mary Ann, since you started repositioning and sharing your story around fibromyalgia. Well, I guess I, um, I had still had a fear. Of all yeah. of, uh, no matter how well I did, I still had this fear that someone would still see me with fibromyalgia and that they would yeah. the chronic illness. And I still had trouble. Um, trying to believe that I fit it into the court, you know, the professional um, um, realm. So I dabbled with LinkedIn. I found, yeah. uh, but once I shared my story, um, probably three months ago now on LinkedIn. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like yes. So um, how did you get the story together? So tell us about that process. Well, you know, it was I, I had written it a long time ago, and I mm -hmm. had never done anything with it. But with the help of the amazing Amy Slattery, yes. she helped me Spring refine Hall. it. Spring Hall, yeah, I'm sorry. different Amy. Yep. A different Amy, like yeah. I'm getting the Amy's. Yeah. Whenever I see an email, Amy email <laughs> in my inbox, I just sort of think, yes, it's a different one. Yeah. So, yeah, and it was just about um, people didn't know who I was. Mm. I think that was the biggest thing. I, I'd been out and about on, on social media, but... I'd been posting about what I do, but nobody knew who I was. Yeah. So that was the difference. It was once people people wanted to, you know, don't really know what want to know what you do until they know who you are. Yeah. So once they started to know who I was, um, I then got an opportunity. Yes, I had an opportunity to uh, submit my resume to a, a company in Hong Kong, doing some work with them. And yep. then a health non for profit in Australia. I've just run a webinar for them. Yep. Which I just got my first client Fine lead from, from this yeah. week. Um, so yeah, it's been and um, I'm having coffee tomorrow with yeah. a guy from Medibank Private about what health and wellness programs. I didn't tell you about that. No, one. another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's. I I guess I finally got the fear disappeared because yep. the, uh, my story was out there and. Um, yeah. I didn't have anything to hide behind anymore. It's like, well, here I am. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it was, it's been exciting. And it's just. It's fantastic to see. And I remember there was months and months of resistance for you with LinkedIn because when uh, Mary Ann started doing her Eventbrite uh, webinars and she was putting them on social media like Facebook, I was doing some courses and they were teaching that events on LinkedIn were going gangbusters during COVID. And I remember saying to Marianne, we've got to get this set up as an event on LinkedIn. And she was like, ah, oh, that's where the professionals hang out. And oh, who am I to be a clinical nutritionist in a realm of doctors and experts in LinkedIn? 
And so you resisted that for months and months and months. <laughs> Finally, though, you overcame your fear. You wrote that article about healing from fibromyalgia and then it's got a little tagline about the mysterious disease or something like that. Yeah. The invisible illness. The invisible illness. So really good catch uh, line there. Posted that on LinkedIn. Talk to us about some of the, what that was like for you when you per first put that out on LinkedIn and how it got, you know, what happened when that happened? Well, I didn't think anyone would read it. Yeah. Like, who would read my story? Like, you know, mm. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a nobody. And because, yes, I think going on LinkedIn was about all my idols that I've been in the natural medicine world that I've been following for many years are all on there. And you yeah. go, well, how, if I put anything about, you know, in my story and about what I did to heal, I, I thought I was going to get ridiculed. But yeah. I didn't. It's amazing the responses that I got from people. They're going, they um, commented, there was even a couple of them that shared my story and I'm going, wow. Mm -hmm. like, and it has resonated and I've had people um, send me emails on the back of just reading my story and going, you know, that's amazing. So yeah. I'm going, wow, what is it, you know, what is it that I've got that I think it's just the passion. Jody. Yeah, it's the the now the belief. Yeah, that you know, what I do is actually making a difference. Yes. So there's the belief. There's the passion. I think is something that you've always had in you. There's the visibility, and then there's the relatability. I think that that's a very important thing. Yeah. Is fibromyalgia, as you know, Marianne, is one of these invisible illnesses that. People live with for years and they are in a space where they really want to try and find answers and just anything that they could possibly get their hands on. And the reality is, like you've been through, it can be a roundabout of just close doors, close doors, deal with it, etc. Well, the doctor said to me, just go home and live with it for the rest of your life. Like, he, yeah. they, there was no option. Yeah. Oh, there was. I'm going to take medication for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so what I love about this experience that Marianne's had is it just goes to show that when you have the courage to speak to the key thing, the micro niche, which is not healing from chronic illness, which was the space Marianne wanted to play with for some time, and she still does, but there is this fear, isn't there, of like, but if I say it's just fibromyalgia, what if someone has something else mm -hmm. or something else? Yes. But often your breakthrough moment is going to be when you speak directly to the core source. And that's something that's worked very well for Marianne. So out of that article, you got an invitation from the crew in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. The school thing came out of that yep. as well. Uh, new clients, mm -hmm. people contacting and emailing you, sharing, notability, all of this kind of cool stuff. Plus that article's been written posted somewhere else hasn't it didn't you get it published somewhere else or is Not it going yet. in no. the hong kong we're hoping to people? we're hoping to get it into uh, body and soul that's what amy is oh, working on right now brilliant that will be amazing yeah. amazing so marianne tips for anyone who and i know there's a lot of you in the lbb community at the moment who have just joined recently for anyone that is still sitting on the fence or making up excuses about why they're not ready to do a webinar, what do you say to them? What I say to you is just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just get out of your own way because you ne you never know who needs to hear what you have to say mm. because the, your, your message is vitally important for somebody and if you don't get it out there, if you don't say you don't speak it people can't hear it yep and you can't make a difference in uh, if they, no one's listening no one's hearing what you've got to say so just get out there and do it the other thing that i would say to marianne's credit is remember last year i think you were on every coaching call yep. i ever did and we <laughs> used to sue have Gia Cody. yeah so marianne and sue were on literally every single coaching call that i ever did but the value of getting onto those coaching calls is we put together your slides. We'll write the copy for your Eventbrite pages. We'll build the emails. We can do all of those pieces together. So never feel like you're on your own. Even when Marianne actually, I think I was on your first webinar. In fact, I was, and I bought your program and created the buying flurry. Yeah. 
Because <laughs> I knew I wanted to buy her program because I wanted to get my genes tested and I wanted to get my partners. And so this is a very important thing is tap into the people in the community. I just remembered that, Marianne. I jumped onto her webinar, got the comments going, at the end was the first person to buy. It wasn't a false buy. I genuinely bought it because I wanted to. And if you have someone that you think is ready to buy, get them on your webinar, they'll buy and they'll give people permission yeah. to follow yeah. suit. Do you yeah. think that works? Absolutely. And do you know that a lot of my clients over the last 18 months have been LBV members? Mm. And I've been clients of those as well. So, you know, if someone's got a service, if you've got a service, put it out there to everybody, not yeah. just... Not just um, the, the wider world, put it out to us because you know what, There's, you never know what people are looking for, you That's never know right. how much help, what help they need and like I said, I've used the services of other LVB members that I've met along the way because we all have services that we can share yes. that we all need. So. It's very true actually. I always look inside of LVB when I'm looking for something first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good place to go. So thank you, Marianne, for being our special Top Tip Tuesday guest and inspo. Thank you. For those of you that are watching the replay or if you are watching this on YouTube, you'll also find some uh, videos if you go in and type in the search around launching your webinar where I actually walk through the slides you need to do your webinar. If you are in the Lifestyle Business Builder program, jump on one of the coaching calls and we'll go through that uh, process together. It worked for Marianne. Yes. It can work for you too. Thanks, Marianne. Thanks, Jody. See you, everyone. Bye. See you on a coaching call soon. Bye-bye. Ciao.